I would like my wife's condoms. I remember these things as kids being amazing. Oh gosh, it's disgusting to talk about this way. What can I do that makes someone feel like a dumbass? And it's gonna look good and you're gonna listen to it. What's going on, you filthy Zimbabwean? Uh, so I just dropped the parents off at the airport. It's like about midday and we're gonna get back into some work. So I haven't, I, I didn't say this in the previous videos because I didn't really plan this out, but I hope you had a Merry Christmas, a happy Christmas. I hope you had a good time with family. Uh, it's, I'm filming this on Tuesday. Obviously you'll see this on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. But like the Dustin, Paul, like I'll say Merry Christmas to you guys. It feels weird saying like Merry Christmas through a camera, right? Like that does feel weird. Um, but I, aside from just making a few random clips when I've had time in the morning and the odd drive time pod vlog, I haven't really thought about work. I've tried not to think about work. And I, I, it's funny, I don't think about it as work. I think about it as like a hobby. Like sometimes there's, you know, work involved in that. But when I say to my wife, I'm gonna go down and work or I need to get some work done today. I don't, it doesn't feel like I'm working. It feels like I get to go and do something that I want to do, which is cool, which is really cool. All right, so because we've had some time to think, well, because I've had some time to think about what I'm doing, I've set some new priorities. Number one is that I need to have a little bit more structure around producing videos on TikTok. Like I want to keep my, like the kind of have the creative freedom, but I think I need to set, um, what's the next video I'm going to work on so that when I'm going to work two this week or do two videos, I know what I'm going to be working on. I think that is a pretty crippling thing. When you start any task and you're not really sure what your first step is, then the step looks so big that you don't even take it. And I'm guilty of that quite often. Like I look at my huge list of ideas and I just don't do any of them because I don't know where to start on which one. So I think first step, planning out the videos that I want to do as time rolls around. Number two, the, this leads, this is a two-parter. All right, first one, the videos, the, the clips that we've been doing have actually been performing much better on YouTube shorts, performing really well, like in the tens of thousands. On TikTok, we're, we're doing better than before. So we're up at like just under a thousand between 700 and a thousand. And Instagram, I barely looked at, but I know it's not fantastic. You, uh, okay, so where I'm going with that. Uh, those aren't driving much traffic over to the main channel, right? Because they're not generating enough views. Maybe they are on YouTube, I'm not sure. But on TikTok, they're not generating generating enough views. Which got me thinking about, again, the thumbnails. I mentioned this in an earlier video. But I was kind of into this idea of just doing just straight screenshots from the videos as um, the thumbnails. I like that idea, but there's a huge button here. What I fail to understand is that someone like, let's say other people who do just use a thumbnail from their video, they're iconic. Like you look at, let's say Sam Sulek, if you don't know who he is, you look at one of his thumbnails and he looks like an absolute beast and you think, what the hell is going on here? And you go in and have a look. I, get, I talked about this the other day, didn't I? So you get that if you watch that part of the video. How do I... How do I make me clickable in a thumbnail? That's what I'm really not sure of. Uh, I could take some roids and hit the gym a lot. I don't know if I have the work ethic for, I don't know if I like the gym enough to be able to do that. 
I could get some nice lip filler. I, that's, this is not a sly comment to that girl. I don't mean it to be. But I could try and make myself look really pretty. There's a lot of work to be done, but I could try. And I'm not an old, wise-looking man that can sit there on his ranch with a straw hat smoking a cigar. All right, that's just not where I'm at. So if you have any ideas about thumbnails, I would welcome them. But I'll tell you what, I have had an idea to try and get people from TikTok over to these videos, which is while I film something like this, I just go live at the same time on TikTok. Nothing changes. I'm not looking at the comments on that because I really don't want to be like live streaming at the same time. And then in this video that you're watching, you end up with a load of me just like, thank you, J1248 for the heart emoji. Right? Like the fuck? Yeah. Not feeling that. Not feeling it. So I was thinking just have it on at the side and then that might be a good way for people to see the kind of nonchalant, chill atmosphere that we've got going on and maybe some level of value in the things that I talk about. I think that could be quite good. Honestly, I think going live is kind of weird. It's kind of weird to watch someone live. I don't know, oddly, it feels way more normal in this video, even though it's basically the same because there's no cutting out of anything. So I think I might start doing that and just see how it goes because it's not going to be any extra work. It's just starting the live. All right, well, I wrote down loads of thoughts while I was away. Actually, one of the funny ones was that, oh, I'm going to mention this. I feel, I feel like a dumbass talking about these things. Like I made up a new rule that's a cool way to live by. That's absolute rubbish. But I mentioned it before. And this is a great, this time, like this week just gone is a great example of putting that into use and how, because I've bought into this idea, there's no like pull for me to get out of the things that I know are the priority at the moment. So let's say, like I live four and a half thousand miles away from my parents. So seeing them, I want to spend as much time as I can with, can, with them as possible. I don't know if that made sense. I want to spend as much time as possible with them. But I also love doing my work and potentially other things. But the idea of being able to fully invest your time and dedicate your time to one thing at a time, like I think the idea of multitasking is absolute rubbish. I don't think, I don't think it's a real thing. We can get into that, right? Because there are, there are nuances. But if I were to try doing some work and make some videos or plan out some videos while my parents are here, I'm missing out on what the priority of that time is. I've got six days with my family. Why would I take out one of those and work on something that I could do any other time? Right? Like I, I understand that I kind of have that luxury. Like some people have to work though, you know, to make ends meet. Then again, I've put myself in that position of luxury from what I do. Like I'm a firm believer in this idea that why should you be, why should you pussyfoot around topics like, like let's say being privileged or like this situation, like where I get to choose what I do with my time. Why would I pussyfoot around that idea when I'm the one who put me in that situation? Like we, feel, like we feel this weird sense of we can't be super proud of what we've accomplished because other people might look at that and think we are out of touch or that we just got it all given to us. Like, who the f cares? Just feel like I'm on a rant now, aren't I? Essentially, I didn't touch my computer, aside from the small things just hanging out the whole time, which is actually a really nice break. 
a very nice break. So one night we're all sat down playing with Ruger and the we stopped watching a a, sh a movie and it's flicked off of like I think we were like airplay to the TV whatever. So after a while that shut off and just normal channels started playing. And I just remember looking around at this one scene. It was, it was, I, I think this tells you a lot about like from a morality perspective of who the type of person you are, what type of person you are. So it, this is the only scene I saw. I don't know anything else to it. A couple are driving on a snowy winter stormy night and their car crashes and they need to go and look for help. So they come across this one house, knock on the door, whatever, and two people who live at this house come outside, both with shotguns, and they're pointing their shotguns at this couple. And looking at the couple, you can tell that they've, like they're not dressed in weather gear, they're not meant to be outside. And it seems like they're both holding them at gunpoint saying like, as if it's an apocalyptic world and they could very easily have someone come by and try and kill them for all of their food and whatever else and shelter whatever anyway they're arguing back and forth and the couple say yeah but we have a child and so one of the guys switches his stance completely from feeling threatened and wanting to kill these people or at least wanting to get rid of them to we have to bring them in and protect them. Whereas the other person with the shotgun is still on this idea that they're not, they shouldn't come in. Like they're strangers, shouldn't do it. So they still have the shotgun up. And then the guy who's pulled his shotgun down has essentially put his life on the line. He says, if you don't, like either you're gonna have to shoot me and then shoot them, but I'm bringing them in. So essentially he's giving his friend whoever it is an ultimatum that you either kill me and them or you let us come in and I was like oh, that's a very admirable thing to do I feel like I would do the same thing in that situation and then I thought about it a bit more I thought I'm not dying for two random people that I have no idea about right like I'm not putting my life on the line for two random people like the that, I felt like that was one of those things where in my mind I told myself that I would put my life on the line. That, that's the right thing to do. But in this situation, would you really do that? Is, is a stranger's life more important than yours? Like, I don't know if you believe in heaven, hell, or afterlife. But the idea that, that this whole thing is now is, can be gone in a second because you try to protect two random people... It's interesting, isn't it? Like, do you think you would put your life, would you sacrifice your life for two other people, to two random strangers? The, you know, the, the unborn baby plays an aspect, but yeah, I don't think I would. And the funny part about that is my parents were using my phone to talk to my sister who is quite literally rowing, she's in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, rowing, rowing the Atlantic Ocean. I don't know what would make anyone want to do that. So they're on like a satellite phone talking to her through my phone. And so I send that thought from my mum's phone to myself. I don't know how or why, but I guess my mum or dad looked at that message later and my dad was like, what's What's this rather cryptic message you sent yourself? Do you want me to read out what the message is? This is all the context that he had to go on Why he was asking. Two people arrived at a housing place after crashing their car. They're held at gunpoint by your friend and one of them is pregnant. Do you pull them in and put your life on the line to protect them from your friend? Question mark. Your life versus theirs. I imagine he's read that and gone what the hell is my son messed up in? He's like, why is it your friend? Who's your friend in this? Why has your friend got a shotgun? I'm like, I'm putting myself in the position of one of the characters. 
So I spent like 10, 20 minutes explaining that to them, that actually I don't have a friend that has a shotgun that's holding up a pregnant person. Weird. What other notes did I have? Uh, you know, I thought about I'm going to go back to this social automation thing where we have the fan pages with the clips. I've been thinking, while those might be getting, you know, some views. All right, so I'm battling in my head here. They might be getting some views, but you can also see how many people are viewing your profile. And those people are choosing not to follow, like, because the followers are going up so slowly at all, if at all, on TikTok. And I'm wondering if I also create another account that houses not just my videos, but videos of other popular people. And I wonder if, instead of the account being dedicated to just Oliver Wright, it's dedicated to clips from popular streamers and whatnot. And the reason I do that is because, uh, the reason I think this might be a good idea is the whole social proof concept that if someone sees me alongside bigger names, it elevates my, oh gosh, it's disgusting to talk about this way. It elevates my social weight And then I th the reason I, th I like that is because it's, I think it gives people a, or elevates the chances of someone wanting to figure out who I am. Like, why is this guy somewhat involved with these people? Why is he on this account with these other people? Right, so essentially, what can I do that makes someone have a deeper desire to learn about or understand who I am and then find these videos. It's quite, there's quite a lot of psychology that goes into it, I think. Like, I don't know, I don't know. What if, okay. So I truly believe that I don't, I don't have any desire to be famous. I don't want approval from people. I don't want any of these things. I just want to be able to make videos and hope that people enjoy them and obviously make a decent amount of money off of them. Right? It goes without saying. But my two former goals, enjoy making the videos and hope and like try and make them enjoyable for people to watch. Those are my goals, but what if like, while I truly believe that I'm doing this for those reasons, what if underneath all of that, I'm actually doing it because I want approval and I want to be, I want fame. And actually, the way I think is kind of broken. I hope that's not the case. I don't think that's the case. I feel like I'm pretty sure in who I am on what I want to be doing. I don't know, there's a, I think there's a lot that goes into wanting to be a creator. Because it's not for everyone. And there's, it's a lot of work that goes on. I just don't see why. Unless you are looking for validation and whatnot. I don't see why you would want to become a content creator if you don't enjoy the process of like making content and ideas or like the whole thing. I get the impression those are in it for the money and fame and whatever else comes of it. You know, interestingly, I think it was a Colin and Samir podcast with 
Ryan Trahan and a couple of other big names. I don't know if this is the first time I heard Ryan say it, but him and his team, instead of making videos that made them look good or feel good, they wanted to make videos that were almost like a gift to people. It was like, here, we've made something that we really hope you enjoy. See if you go and enjoy it. And then the money and anything else comes after the fact. And I feel myself getting more and more into that, that realm of like, I'm not necessarily making these videos for me. I'm making them for someone to enjoy. Which links back to my comments the other day about, I can't remember which pod vlog it was. It was about uh, Dodford, I think his name is, and how he, he wants to make videos the way he wants to make videos, regardless of whether the viewer likes certain parts of it or not. And my comments, you know, his comments are isolated in interviews, so it's not like him and I have had a good conversation at all. But to me, that sounds like I'm not here to make a piece of content for everyone to enjoy. I'm here to make a piece of content that I enjoy. I feel like that's quite, I'm not, again, this isn't at Dodford. This is more like my way of thinking. I think that's a pretty selfish way of making content. I think there's a place you can meet in the middle. Like if you're putting something online for other people to watch, isn't the goal to put it online for people to watch so that they both enjoy, they enjoyed it and you enjoyed making it. My, yeah, I believe that if you're making a piece of content that is exactly the way you want to make it, regardless of whether someone else, of rather the public enjoy that or not, is, uh, how would I say that? Is it selfish? Is it obnoxious? that I'm gonna do something the way I want to do it. I don't care. You know, maybe, maybe you're not doing it because you want people to enjoy it. Maybe you're just doing it because you wanna create something, which is perfectly fine too, right? But if, if like my thinking is I'm trying to make a video for people to enjoy, like to give to them to enjoy, then it can't be about me creating it in this black box in this silo, regardless of, and then not thinking about how other people want it to be done, right? Yeah, I think, I think I'm okay with that thought. Yeah, I feel really bad when I make a TikTok, post it, and it doesn't do well, I feel really bad that I wasted someone's time. Even if it's just five seconds, 15 seconds, I feel bad that I've wasted their time. Like they, they may expect something from me or from my name or from the title or the hook and they don't get that. I haven't done my job. What well, I had this other thought that was all about um, did I write it down? Oh, yeah. Mate, we'll go through this when I get home because I think I have a good way to demonstrate this. Yeah, let's pause for now. There's a dog hanging out in the car. And go through this when we get home. This is a representation that we're going to use blue knees for. It's something I use almost every day and I thought it would be quite useful to share. So hope you find this useful. Okay, got the blue knees, let's lead. I need a vehicle. This is gonna be our machine, right? That's gonna be our machine. Why is this so off looking? Je ne sais pas. Okay, I'm gonna put you over here so that you can actually see me. 
on what I'm saying. Good, good. Okay, we have our machine in the middle. Let's get these all out. Okay, get these all over here. First of all, what color does blue and green make? I'm not sure. Okay, so. Over here, we have our different inputs. This is everything that can go into the machine. So if I take a bit of green, God, I can't even pop them. Okay, there's green is blue. Goodness, all right. So if we have, oh my God, what is all that? bit of pre-cum. It's not the first time I have a pre-cum on myself. <laughs> Probably good if I record this, isn't it? Yeah, great. It's really dark, I don't like that. Switch it onto manual mode. Then we can get a lot more brightness out of this buddy. That's too much, far too much. That'll do. All right, now we're starting this camera. You even see me all right? Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so, darling. These are our inputs here. We've got, what is the pre-cum going on about still? Okay, so let's say we have some blue. Oh, what a fucking mess. I'm gonna put some paper down. Oh, bloody hell. This is not how I saw this going. I was like, oh, this would be a nice, cool, fun thing to do. Nice and easy, nice and quick. Bob's your uncle. I guess I'll use something a little bit heavier on this end. Jiminy Christmas, dude. This stuff smells. Tray, tray terrible. All right. So here are our inputs. Oh, you know what, I'm gonna stick my Shrek Crocs on because my feet are cold and because I want them to be in the bottom of the video. All right, so if we have blue, we put blue into the machine and then let's say we want some green to go in too. Pre-cum. And then some green going in, all right? If we put blue and green into the machine, so it goes into the machine. That's a beautiful depiction, Oliver, right? Something happens in the machine, which is our brain, and they come out the other side. You didn't see, you didn't see this bit. And they basically look green again. That was meant to be a different color, but they just look green again. If you do the same thing again, and again, and again, and again, you're gonna get the same response. You're just gonna get this mess that comes out the other end. Nothing you can do with that. So what we need to do is change the inputs into whatever it is we're doing. So even if it's something as small as taking this blue one, put it on the end of my crack pipe. <sighs> Bloody hell. Fuck me. I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna make this work and it's gonna look good and you're gonna listen to it. <laughs> okay. 
Beautiful. Okay. So let's say first thing is, we take this little number, we put that into the machine. And then we have some green, and oh, it's stuck on my blue tag. We add that on. It goes through the machine and it comes out the other end, and it's now something very different from what we had initially worked on. I'm not gonna lie, I thought this would be way clearer in my head. This isn't the best visual representation, is it? Just from one small change of input, we have a very different looking output on the other end of things. And I see that as no different to the way we go about life. If you're having a shit day, or if you're having a bad week, and you don't do anything to change it, of course you're gonna get the same thing and you're gonna feel the same way, you're gonna do the same thing again, and again, and again, and again. Like why, why is our first, when we have something that, I, I don't know why I'm treating this like a moan, it's not a moan, but when I see people stuck in this place of going round and round in circles, why can we not, like I'm not, I don't, I don't think I'm crazy special, why am I able to think about things this way and others aren't? And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that I'm better or worse than other people, it's just, to me, this is so, such a basic way of thinking about a problem you have and trying to get out of that problem. Stop you. That was way clearer in my head, okay. I'm gonna try and see how big of a thing I can blow. Oh goodness, it's all stuck to my paper. I just can't get the people these days to do the right jobs. All right, here we go. Okay, nice, nice big piece. Oh. Well, this is trash, isn't it? I remember these things as kids being amazing. But look at the size of the bubble she's blowing. Why can't I do that? <laughs> Donut of a... Are these just old? I also had an idea about thumbnails, which we can go through after this. I'm gonna test out because thumbnails just aren't working at the moment, so. Why isn't that big enough, Duda? What are you doing? Are you scared of it? Duda, come up here. You can go and suck ass. Let's get more, let's do red. I think we're gonna have a little bit of pre-com. What's up, Duda? It always helps if you pierce the top. Seems really wet in comparison to what it normally has been. Let's get a big load. I'm shaking trying to squeeze it out. You don't like this, Duda? Okay. You know what's interesting is while I think about what I just explained and how I explained it, I think back to something like Casey Neistat and I remember there was never any like ambiguity in the way he explained something. Cause he'd like planned it out and thought about how he was gonna explain it. 
But you know, as much as I might want to do that, I can think it through. I don't think I'm going to record something like that multiple times unless it really just doesn't make sense the first time, you know? I'm blowing out the edge. There we go. It's blowing back at me. What do you think, Duda? You want to come up and see? Like that. Okay. Very good. Oh shit. What do you think, dude? Huh? You'll go up and see it? Up. Go on, up again. What do you think? I've just put a hole in it. No hole. Okay, well, they were more fun as a kid, I think. Let's go on and have a look at this thumbnail. I don't know if you remember this back at the beginning. I thought about doing AI backgrounds for the video. Like generative fill backgrounds. I'll show you right now. We'll go and do an example. Because I think... Until I find that I'm the one thing that makes me unique enough to be the, the thing to click, I need something else because currently the number of views that come in from people seeing it recommended are very small because people, most likely people are seeing the thumbnail and just like, oh, that doesn't intrigue me. My thought was that it would be easy to get people interested who were looking for long form content. But when you think of the pool of YouTube, how, is it, how does it know that your content is all that long form and you're trying to get those people? It doesn't know that yet. It's still, it still has such a f small amount of data on my channel to work with. That's the way I think about the algorithm. Like it just, it utilizes the data it has and tries to predict. So I would say that I just need to keep going longer on my channel for it to start recommending my content to the people who maybe click on a thumbnail that's less edited. I still don't want to make it ultra edited. I just want to have a quick background in there. But let's give it a go. I'm going to go wash my hands and then we'll try this. Uh, am I recording the whole screen? Five, uh, yes, I am. Okay, all right, we've got Photoshop open, the beta version, which has the AI generative fill. I'm gonna drag, drag in that screenshot. There's really nothing, there's no good screenshot from this, but I like this because it has the red color on my face. Now, here's what I'm thinking. I take myself out of this like I did in the original shot. Maybe uh, let's try a few things. That'll do there. I'll go up in there. The leg is part of it. A bit more of the leg. I should put myself in like a cyber truck or something, shouldn't I? No, because that's that's fake, Oliver. All right, let's say we've got this, and then we've got nothing underneath. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna clear up these bits here. Just get rid of you, get rid of you. All right, here's, I guess here we go, here's one thing. We're gonna go, fill up this area in behind and say photorealistic 
high detail Ca canon event right because this the story I'm telling in this is a canon event that I think changed my life so I'm just seeing what comes out of this My then, my next idea is that instead of just copying out myself like that, uh, the, the, these are not what I was expecting. All right, let's delete the mask and let's, let's just take out Oh gosh, what have I done? The windows. Let's try that. And then maybe whatever we have is going to go inside the windows. This one's pretty funny because of the rain on the window. It's making it hard to decipher the difference. Okay, I think that is pretty good. So let's deselect that. Uh, and I'm going to invert this mask. Invert mask. So it's something like this. And so there, there, there. What if I put futuristic highway? I want the, here's what I think, I'll tell you where I'm thinking on this. Sorry. There's a, I would like, to have the same thumbnails again and again and again every day. So <clears throat> I want it to be repeatable. I want someone to be able to look at a thumbnail and say, that's an Oliver Wright video, regardless of whether they like it or not. They can see the thumbnail. Um, and I don't want it to look edited. And I want the person to get the idea from the thumbnail that it's gonna be slow and it's gonna be a very casual vlog like this. But how do I do that? Because I think some things would become, I don't know if iconic is the right term, but, but synonymous, let's say. Like this backdrop, right? Like I, I wouldn't be surprised if this, like if this gets anywhere, this would become a thing like people would see like this up on the wall or the whiteboard and be like that's Oliver's office right become recognizable and I want to keep I want to find a way to keep that aspect because I think it's more natural and then also it would be cool this isn't a need but I think this is where it has to go for if there's ever a conversation about Oliver Wright and his content, part of that conversation is, oh yeah, his thumbnails, like it's just a screen grab and then he just throws in some type of AI, generative fill in there. Like there's always some type of AI in his thumbnails. Like this one's quite cool because no one's really sure what it is, including myself. Like I like it. Let's try a couple of different ones. If I show you, go to content here. Oh no, uh, analytics, and then let's go advanced mode and look at uh, 
add an impression click-through rate. Here we go. So for, I don't know, these aren't in order. These are just the top. Like this one's 18.2%. That's an AI one. But it only got 11 impressions in the last 28 days, which I think it was, I posted more than that. Okay, what happened there? So yeah, 7.4%. Oh, whoa. Oh. So that got almost 7,000 impressions, and it was a very basic thumbnail. But like 7.4%. That was like my version of a meta style one. 6.7%. Bed of needles. Like they seem to do better with text on them. So maybe I need to start adding text. Look it. Here's the thing with this video that's about a, the title is the canon event that changed my life. It's very, that's a bit dramatic, isn't it? But it really is that. Um, you'd think like, I could do a thumbnail of me just stood there and a world that's collapsed behind me or something. But it, that doesn't really, that's the thumbnail and then you get into the video and it's just a dude talking in his car and you're like, this didn't seem to be what I came for. So these are the things that are going on in my head. Oopsie daisy. So I think, what if we go for a word in here? Whoopsie. I can't be bothered doing that. Oh, I guess I should. It looks tr trashy, doesn't it? Without a bit of a brush in there to get rid of the white lines. Otherwise, it looks so obvious that it's a... I mean, I, I guess I'm okay with people knowing that it's a... that it's been cut out. But I'd rather it not look as shit. <laughs> I've been cussing a lot more, haven't I? In these videos. I'm not a huge fan of cussing, but I'm not really against it either. Okay, all right. Let's say it's this. I And then a text template of... Canon event. Maybe I'll just put a story, a Tory. We'll see what it looks like. Make it much bigger. And then we'll add a bit of stroke, give it a nice little stroke. Like that, just looks a story. What do we think of that background? I quite like those leading lines coming into me, but it's pretty obvious that they're not real. Let's try two things. Let's try... Let's try this as it is. Uh, what is this? This is three, three point two. And then 
let's try this as just the uh, death. 3.1 and then just maybe give them a quick change. I don't know if I have access to A-B testing. So it's not, it's not here yet, which is great, really great, really great. I think I'm going to try, let's see what it looks like. I think you can see that the person's in the car. Just say frick it and go for it. We'll do the AI with the wording. A story, that sounds quite, oh, what's that? Okay. Stoop. Okay, dokey. All right. Next. Oh yeah, my. Um, I think I said that I ordered the sample beanies. I don't know if I don't know if I said that or if I said I was planning to, but that was my parents' Christmas present. They wanted to be able to. They wanted to give me money. But they were like, you have your own ideas of what to spend it on. So I thought this would be a good thing to spend it on. So they're like $40 each, $40 shipping. So they gave me enough to get like two hats or something, which is very kind of them. It's nice to be able to put that money to something like that versus just spending it on whatever. Um, Yeah, I think I'll, I'll send everything over to the people I've been talking to, get them to send a mock-up, and then I'll show you what it looks like. I also, all of my product, all of my um, merch is at a warehouse in Kentucky, and it hasn't been selling. I haven't really been pushing it, but it hasn't been selling. So it's costing me 250 a month to keep it there. <laughs> and, I've been, I've just had it there for the last like three or four months. I should really have it all sent here, shouldn't I? But then I, my fear is that that's going to cost like silly amounts of money. And then maybe things do better. Because I don't, I don't want to have to do the shipping of items. I don't want to have to do fulfillment. That's, that was the whole reason I chose a, fulfill, a fulfillment center was because I don't want to spend my time fulfilling orders or filling orders. But I might have to for a little bit because it just doesn't make sense. Okay, what am I going to do next? I am going to review, I need to do this, I need to review a contract and then that's, no, I don't need to do the contract first. Let's look through the ideas that I have, yeah? And see which of those we can plan out going forward. Oliver, what a great idea. Notion. Uh, let's go to content calendar. My gosh, dude, I have got this. I'll just show you this. Look at, one, this is just so disorganized. So everything you see in this screen has either been somewhat started or is just an idea. That's good. Like lots of these are just are useless now. Like are not ideas that I'm willing to do. But like swinging with ankle weights, that one was in progress. I, just, I shot all of that. I just haven't ever gotten around to actually doing anything with it. Smelling salts, shot most of that as well. 
I think the... I've got some ideas that are gonna take time to be able to actually make a video out of it. So here we go. Those. We've got... Something, something. The iron lung. Where's my iron lung? Hello, Duda. Here we go. I've got two, that one's upstairs maybe, of these. So this is meant to be a lung trainer. This. And then you increase or decrease this, you wind up or down for more or less resistance. Should give this a wash first. Okay, well. How would I test? this. How do you test how much oxygen you can consume in a breath? Uh, I, guess, I guess I'll keep recording. Uh, I don't know why I'm asking Google this. I should ask ChatGPT. How do I test my... Is it VO2 max? Like the volume, yeah, volume of oxygen. I have no idea. Here we go. Oh no, it's not VO2 max. How can I test lung capacity? Stop, go. Okay, let's do it at home. I need to be able to test this with... with this in my mouth, so the tester needs to be on the other end of this, doesn't it? Maybe not. Because I was thinking the test would be how much air can I inhale in like, I don't know, five seconds without this and then with this. But I think actually, like that would be a good test to show off to begin with. But I think the better test would be like using this every day for a week to see if I can inhale more air over a period of time. So like I do a test at the beginning of the week and then a test at the end of the week, but use this all throughout the week. Yeah, does that make sense? I think that makes sense. So let's do this. Oh, gosh, I wanna get everything from, like that was filmed too, but Never did anything with that. Oh gosh. Let's move it over to in progress. Let's, you're done as well. Um, I feel like I do need a find sponsor column. Here's how I want this to work. Like I want to be able to throw in an idea to the no status column 
And then let's say once a week, I review my ideas and those that I think are actual good ideas, I bring those into the backlog, right? So those are things that are going to be worked. Idea, don't really need that as a column, do I? I don't think I need that as a column. Idea needs to be Yeah, because like I don't think these columns work for me anymore. Backlog houses all your ideas. And then I want to work in like one week sprints. So I take on an amount of work for a one week period and I should aim to get that done. That should be enough that I can get done in a week. So then maybe The idea column should be the sprint. I don't know, a page? Nah, that's not what I wanted. Delete. That's a stupid idea. What am I going to do with that? High heeled shoes. <laughs> Ronda Santis wanting to be six foot. <laughs> Ronda Santis. Let's, you know what? Let's just do everything that's in idea. Can I do a multi? I want everything with a status of idea to move, to be changed to backlog. How do I do that? Uh, edit. No. I think that just takes me in. Like a bulk change, you know what, you know what I mean? I don't know, I can figure that out after. So I'll merge everything in there and then I'm gonna make a new column that's gonna be sprint. What is, why would you have moved over, you donut? Sprint, you're gonna go over here, okay. Why is there every, why is stuff in sprint? I don't understand that. Where did you come from? In review, ready. Oh god, and there's shitloads in this as well. So like most of the loads of these I can delete. Oh gosh. Like that can go in over here. Oh no. Sort. There has to be a bulk edit. Notion bulk edit. Uh, I don't know, dude. Like, I don't want to throw these ideas away. But I think most of these should actually go in a different column. Building discipline. Like, kind of a cool idea. How do you build discipline? 
Right, let's move this over here. Can I select multiple? Yes, here we go. So if I go like Oh, so a lot of these are trash. I can actually dilute because these were from a previous, like when my the old content I used to make. So if I can delete the majority of these. Most of those I did. Uh, nice. State of flow. What is the point in that? Dude, I chase an ass. MITL, don't even know what that means. You uh, monitor using iPad mini, learning to read. I do want to learn how to read fast. Sounds stupid. <laughs> Implementing productivity hacks? No. Like I could do a shade desk setup. What the hell is Reiki healing? Like YouTube ideas. I do want to learn how to automate my business, but that learn how to run effective ads. Oliver, you don't even know how to do that. Um, ultimate morning routine. Trash. Uh, the wearing eye patch. Yeah, we could do that one, couldn't we? Uh, so wearing eye patch is not actually going to be called that. It's going to be called um, night vision with eye patch. Hi, dude. So then, if I grab all of these and I move those over to the backlog. And then all of the ideas, I can move over to the top of the backlog too, can't I? Because, yeah, this just isn't working. Maybe we, for the next, I don't know, however long it takes, I just start going through and taking the top 20 items in the no status column and either deleting or moving those over to the backlog if those are videos that I want to do. Unfortunately. So backlog of... I want this. Yes. Very nice. Backlog of ideas. Good, okay. It changed all of those. Beautiful. So then I don't need idea anymore. Delete the idea page, yes, because there's nothing in it. I don't like doing that. Oh, gross. So then sprint. We are gonna do iron lung. I can also start on sucrosomial magnesium. Sucrosomial mag. Magnesium. What else can I do? Like for, so, I don't know, Paul, if you're watching. The iron lung, we could use this for, does it help hold my breath, like in the hot tub? The hot tub is up. We used it when my parents were here and then it shut off one night and we didn't have enough time for it to warm back up. So it's off at the moment. Those are two things. I also, like a video that can be done in a day. 
is I bought finger condoms. I'm just kidding. <laughs> these aren't finger condoms. These are these are my actual condoms. You know what? I'm just defending. These are my wife's condoms. Look at that. That is far more than you need. Far more than you need. So my idea for this was that you, like I was thinking one of them could be fake tan. You fill each of these up with fake tan and you keep it on your finger for different periods of time throughout the day. So like, let's say five minutes, one hour, two hours, the whole day, maybe do whole hand. I thought that would be quite interesting. How long does it really last? Like these are the types of ideas that I think would do so well for a brand that does, um, what's it called? What's it called? The flipping fake tan that does fake tan. Because it's, it's a great video, even if people aren't watching it thinking, oh yeah, I need to buy fake tan to be able to try that. They're watching it and that brand name if they ever think fake tan, that's the brand name they think about. That is what I try and do with my content versus selling you, trying to sell you the, the best thing. I just make you aware of the product that I'm using. If you decide you want to buy it, sweet. If not, sweet. Okay, uh, then... My hands do look a bit dry. Uh, we could do fingertips, hand, uh, fingers in lotion 24 hours. That one could be done in a day. And this is far better than other options like using a glove where it all seeps out. So I can do fingers in lotion for 24 hours, which should not be uh, no, because I can do that one this week. That's like a, that's probably a two day jobby because I need to obviously wait the 24 hours. But like sucrosomal magnesium and the iron lung, I could get started today. Why wouldn't I get started today? I think there's 90 capsules. How many was I meant to take? I think I've done this for like three days so far. Two capsules. So this should last 45 days, month and a half. All right, let's, I'm gonna stop and start you. Sorry, oh no, let's do it with me, phone. Got to put it on video, haven't I? Okay, there we go, day one. So I can, I think we can plan the iron lung. I'm gonna wash this and we're gonna start this one tomorrow and the sucrosomal magnesium is on the go at the moment. And then I'll start the fingers in lotion tomorrow morning. Should we plan that out now? What time is it, 3.15? Yeah, let's plan out fingers in lotion. Okay, give me a sec to get situated. Weirdly nervous about just going live on TikTok. Don't know why, feels weird. Uh, but we're gonna do it anyway, all right? That's, we, we've hit the button. So, hand in lotion 24 hours. Okay, all right, here's, 
so I did this once before, and I think it did like five and a half million views. I got the idea from some other dude who did it, and I don't know, for him it seemed to work really well. Uh, his hands got really wrinkly, although to be honest, mine look disgracefully wrinkly as they are at the moment, don't they? Um, but we'll just, we'll just deal with that, glaze over that. So it worked well for me. I didn't get the same wrinkliness, but I did find that just doing things was really difficult and annoying. Like it was, um, I mean, to be fair, I didn't use a glove. I used a, <laughs> a tortilla wrap bag. So that probably wasn't ideal. But I'm thinking this time, if I use these, you know, my wife's condoms, then I can sit one on each finger. And if we write down the, I don't know, down here, uh, what, what should we do as the different fingers? I'm thinking one of the fingers definitely has to stay for 24 hours with lotion on it. But maybe the others go like, I don't know, this one only stays for one hour and then five hours, 10 hours, 24 hours. I don't know. I think that's what I'm thinking. So if we go to plan out the video, I don't know if, um, oh, it's snowing quite hard now. That's good. Good girl, Duda. Honestly, my thought was that that would let in some decent light, but it's so bloody dark and overcast that hasn't done anything. Useless. All right, going raw. <laughs> All right, so if we're gonna plan this out, what is the the want? So for the whole video, we wanna see what happens. You know, I guess we wanna see what happens if you put your hand in lotion for 24 hours. So the setup one is to uh, put lotion on hand. Or it's to ask, how do you keep lotion on hand? Fuck me, dude. I, the, really, the whole handwriting series that I want to do should come sooner rather than later because this is awful. All right, so I want to, how do you keep your hand in lotion for 24 hours? And we find that we can use my wife's condoms Wife's condoms, uh, add lotion, and start. Okay. I, co I do really like the idea of showing that my hands are, like they're actually at the moment quite uh, chapped isn't the word, is it? <laughs> I think they're quite, uh, What I don't even know what the word is dry, they just look dry. And I would love the idea of setting up this video uh, like kind of like a movie where something happens that then instigates this whole thing, but like we've discussed, we can't do that for TikTok. So this formula, we're gonna start with going straight into the whole video, getting lotion on my hands. Now, because we're using my wife's condoms instead of a glove or something. I think we have to kind of set that up a bit so the viewer um, sees that, I guess there's a little bit of somewhat planning that's gone in behind it and it's not just, oh, this dude has really, really, really large condoms lying around his house. Why are they ribbed? Why do these look ribbed? I don't know, might have to give them a go later. Just, just so we're clear, that's not, that's not a thing, right? The wife's eight months pregnant, so. That's gross, why am I even, sorry. Okay, so we've got, we wanna find out how to keep our hand in lotion for 24 hours, that's our initial problem. So we get the small condoms, we add lotion to each finger and start. But the catch is that uh, I'm 
thinking one thing is like I can feel they're pretty tight on my finger to be having on all day, but there's not really much we can do about that. I think maybe, like, can I use my phone? No, oh, I can, cool. So I can use my phone, maybe it's hard to type. Let's list out a couple of things that I can try doing when there's lotion inside of here and these are on my fingers. And then I can try these different things and see which one actually causes problems. So let's say typing, um, texting, um, I kind of want to do it that Here's where we get to this like sensa sensationalist part of content. As we, as we make this video on this, there's a part of me that wants to go and try and do things that are kind of out there and wild. So like, let's say I've got one of these on each finger and I want to go and try rock climbing. I think we all know that that's, gonna, that's not going to turn out very well, is it? And why would I, no normal person would try rock climbing with these on their fingers, unless you're an idiot like me. Um, and I, I think we're moving away from this place of doing crazy things just for a video. And instead moving into this place of like doing it out of curiosity. Like I really, I do want to try this again because it didn't turn out the way I, expected it to last time and I want to see if there's that much of a difference in the different hours that it stays on the hand. Um, what are some other catches of lotion on fingers? I think it has to be that we just certain things get difficult, right? Um, maybe we'll do it. I don't know if the lotion in hand will affect my ability to touch a phone. And as we, th like if you've been following along on YouTube, you'll know that we also add in the floor and the strength for the video. But I found that rather than like having the video idea and then putting out my flaw and strength doesn't really work. I found that going through a motion of what could happen in this experience or this story is a better way of deciding what is my flaw, what do I foresee as being something that I will find difficult, and then how can I actually learn to turn that into a strength or at least move it away from being a flaw. So the catch is that, I don't know, things get hard. <laughs> Penis joke. Things get hard. Like I'm trying to make, move away from this, uh, the type of content I've been making where it's very dramatic. I don't, I don't like that as much. So things get hard and my flaw is that uh, any reason to quit. Or like not resilient. Again, I, I quite often use flaws that not, aren't actually my flaws. Like they're not, they're not things that I would consider to be true for me. But I do really like the idea of like, let's say like there are people out there who are, who would quit too easily, who aren't resilient. But I think it's good for those people to see someone openly have that kind of a flaw and then throughout an experience overcome that to realize that actually these things are no good for you. Like ha always having this mindset of I can quit or I want to quit is just, like, that doesn't help you get anywhere. So if I can make myself look bad as an attempt to make someone else feel better and, and move with like to this strength with me, then I'm all for that. I'm okay with looking like a donkey to help someone else get to a strength.
All right, so let's say things get hard, which tests the flaw of uh, wanting to quit or like not wanting things to be difficult or challenging. So then I think we have to try a few things. Uh, what things could we try? And then maybe like, as I want this to be a bit more natural, maybe we then pick out things, like we film all of it or I film all of it and then I pick out the things that I think would be best for the video. Like let's say dog walking. And the result is slip out of hands. Like the lead slips out of hands or it's too cold. Um, I don't know, let's try something stupid like hot tub, can't get hands wet. So in this section here, sorry, I'll do a better job of explaining. So in this section here, this is where we have like the meat of the video, the, the real experience that the viewer, they listen to the hook of the video on short form and they decided that, yes, I like this. What's going to happen in this video? Let's see what happens. I want to see, you know, the outcome. So this is kind of like setting up the story, getting things going, showing the viewer that it's really going to happen. And then here you get into trying different things where the viewer can get to almost live the experience or see how the experience is affecting the person, the main character, me, doing this. So dog walking, hot tub, uh, texting or typing. Uh, workout, get some old Sam Sulek in there. So workout is like, can't carry weights. Texting or typing, um, can't touch type. And you see how all of these things are, the result is bad. Like this is the mindset that I'm in, that like when you try something, something wrong happens, so then you have to go and try something else. But what if, let, for argument's sake, let's say the workout, uh, let's say that actually turned out well because my workout doesn't include any kind of weight, it's just, I don't know, cycling or running. You turn that into a positive. But I don't know if you heard that. That was Duda. Okay, that was the dog. Um, but you want, you kind of want to show. So that's why I like doing these YouTube videos is because you get to see the reality of of the the true experience. And then the experience gets like adapted to make a more entertaining story on TikTok. So if like you're interested in seeing all the behind the scenes that go into a video and the like some some more of the real experiences that aren't entertaining enough to make it to the TikTok, then YouTube is the spot to go to for that. So essentially, this is all leading up to the fact that I'm going to hit a point in the day where this sucks. Oh, wait, we've completely skipped over the part that they're done for different hours. Um, you know, you could almost make this into a four or five part series, couldn't you? So video number one is over the one, the one hour period of of having all of them on your fingers and the end of that video is you taking it off of the one hour finger and see if it makes any difference. Next video is continued that day. Yeah, continuation of that day up until you take the second one off at maybe five hours or 10 hours. I quite like that idea. And then this goes back to, we talked about this before with people saying you could easily have fit this into one video. Like that's not, 
it's not about making just one video. It's it's the enjoyment of making multiple videos. Like I'm not doing this for the follows or the likes. I'm not trying to stretch out a series just for more viewership or whatever. It's the fact that I would like to turn this into four stories, right? Like the ability to, to overcome four different flaws through one experience. I also feel like in this case, if I were to, if the video was gonna be taking them off after like one hour, five hour, 10 hours, then all the video would really be is me explaining what happened when I took it off at one hour or what happened when I took it off at five hours. You know, I feel like that would be really boring. And so this video should be taking it off at one hour. So where do I mention that? Because I want the viewer to come into the video and know that it's not gonna be about, they're not gonna see in this video what happened to my hand after having it for 24 hours. I want them to know and expect that the result that they're gonna get out of finishing this video is they're gonna see what happened to the finger after an hour. And if they enjoyed that experience, they'll come back for the second one. I hate the idea, like there have been a couple of occasions on the hundreds of videos I've made that people have commented like uh, something along the lines of, this wasn't what I expected. And like that, that sucks. Cause I really hate the idea that someone has been misled because I haven't thought it through properly. But we can figure that out. We can, we can, it's not the intention, right? I know that. All right, so we've got all the condoms on. Things get difficult. And so what would I try in the first hour of the day? Let's do it like that, yeah? So we would try working out. I never draw my ones like that. I don't know why I have. So we would try working out, what else? Dog walking, which this is number one. That's number two. Um, so those things get difficult. I don't think there's enough substance in here because I need the video to be at least a minute. Hello. Oh, it's the oops man. UPS guy. So. All right, so we'll try dog walking. We'll try working out. What other things can we do? Bless you, Duda. I think we highlight that like I just have to be careful holding the lead because it slips out of hand. I can imagine these unraveling, unrolling on my hand. Yeah, so we try dog walking and then we try working out because by seven o'clock at the gym, there aren't that many people. So not many people will be watching me film, which is great. Hate filming in front of other people because they also feel uncomfortable too. All right, so what is the crisis point here like can't shower because uh, I can't get them wet can't shower because can't get hands wet oh you know what I should also I'm gonna add in here somewhere the, so let's say, I don't know, three, the previous experience. So the last time I did this, what happened? I think that would be good to, to add in some more context. So crisis is like the lowest point, having done these things. Uh, I don't know, I can't shower as a rubbish. 
crisis point, isn't it? Plus the fact I've only been doing this for an hour, so if we're talking about having walked the dog and at the gym, what if, so the crisis point is can't lift normal weights. All right, so that's my biggest problem, but I'm pretty much at the time where I can peel off the thing. Um, now, here is the point where we have a couple of choices to make. We have, I can't get the condom off. We have uh, stop the challenge or we could, so to stop the challenge means taking them all off. Or what other options are there? Stop the challenge, don't lift the weights, stop weights. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this actually happens, that the weight breaks, like tears some of this. Um, let's do that, because I'm sure it will happen. And that is kind of a banana out of left field. You didn't expect that to happen, did you? The weight tears finger, or thing, I think actually, we could try the weight tears one of the other fingers and so that we don't avoid the challenge, I have to... No, what if the weight tears the finger? But it's okay because I just have to wait a few minutes until the hour is up. Right, something along those lines. Uh, wait until hour is up. I think I should take more of these. All right, so there are a few more parts that I still need to do to this. I still need to add in like a few subtle things that kind of like, uh, we'll call them Easter eggs, that if you notice them, so like if you watch this, the YouTube videos, you'll know that those Easter eggs are there and you'll keep an eye out for them and you're like the inner circle. But if someone random's just watching it on TikTok and they happen to notice it, they'll think that it's really clever or like they'll appreciate the effort that's gone into it. And I like, and that's kind of the fun part as well is adding these small things in. So I would like to I want to bring up the idea of them tearing somewhere in here as if they're not, I guess that's, maybe I'll explain. Through this formula, my fear of adding in what we call a banana is that the, because the banana in itself is something that's out of left field that someone wasn't gonna guess as the choice the person makes, it can't be crazy out of left field. It can't just be something completely random because then you're left thinking, well, how the hell's that happened? And the, the number of movies where someone's in this really difficult position and then all of a sudden something crazy, like a, a helicopter comes out of nowhere or an orangutan takes out the bad guy. I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever seen that one. Uh, we'll glaze over that one. But you, you just remember thinking about that movie and you think that, that was stupid, wasn't it? Like what a ridiculous thing. But I think the weight that I'm holding tearing this is, is not something a person would expect, but you can see how that happens. So it doesn't necessarily need to be featured somewhere else in here, unless I can think of a creative way to like reference this earlier on. Maybe it would be good to mention how thin they seem. 
Uh, things get hard. Where would I put that they break? It seems to break easily. Maybe I break one as I'm putting it on. And then that way, it makes this far more believable because I don't want it to be a, you know, just a coincidence. And someone's watching it thinking, oh yeah, of course. That's lucky it happened at that time. You know, I was also thinking one hour seems like nothing, doesn't it? That's not really going to do anything to your finger. Or do we kind of want to see that because no one keeps it on for an hour? Yeah, let's do it. I was thinking about wearing it overnight to begin with. But no, let's do that. So we've got, we have the hook for the video and then the setup want is how do you keep lotion on your hand because my fingers are cracked. So I find my wife's condoms, add lotion and start. But as I'm like trying to put the condoms on, like one or two of them may break. And then the catch is that uh, things get difficult, normal things get difficult. Every day things get hard. I've just scribbled out on a whiteboard. I do, I do quite often question how low my IQ is. <laughs> All right, then we go into dog walking and it's difficult to hold or it's too cold out or it's like really cold out on my hand because I can't wear gloves on top. Then I go to work out. Oh no, maybe then as I'm dog walking, I talk about the previous experience before I go to the gym. And then I find the weights are difficult to use. I can't lift my normal weight. So I can either stop it, stop the challenge altogether, stop wearing, using weights, but then it tears at one of the fingers, which leaves me in a point of having to like hold it together until the time runs up. Wait until hour is up. I kind of want I don't know what I want um wait tears through finger like here's here's a funny joke that I think could do. I'm going to change this around. So uh, instead of the crisis being can't lift the weight, it's going to be the weight tears the, I don't know, we'll call it finger. So then stop the challenge, stop weight, but no, the banana is to pull a condom out of my wallet. I don't actually have a condom. So I'm, I'm going to have to go and get a condom tomorrow and then I'm going to have to carry my wallet around in the gym and then I'm going to have to put a condom on my finger at the gym. Yeah. And then the finale right, is, is learning that, yes, you can find a reason to quit. Uh, I don't know how to word this yet. No need to quit when you can look for opportunities. Right, so and then, then going to filter this into the banana, which is like, instead of giving up, 
I chose to look for an alternative, a different way of doing this. And then look for opportunities also becomes the strength. So you move from this person who looked for any reason to quit, who want, like that's previously how they would, I guess, go about life and things. They weren't resilient. Um, to a person who hits a point where they could easily quit throwing the towel and they've decided that they instead want to look for another opportunity to continue. I quite like that. What is going on with my, you can't really see it in this one. I don't really know. All right, cool. I think, um, I think that's it for today. We'll, we can start filming this tomorrow morning, so we'll start off. Uh, the video that I'm making right now, the YouTube video, will be up tomorrow, but there's a video up today at 6 p.m. if you want to go and watch that. Lovely. That one's a, a different one to normal. Yeah. Let's start shooting this tomorrow then. All right.